Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the place where we give thanks to God before we go off to sleep, where we recall his unfailing love given to us throughout the day, and as we prepare for our rest by resting in his promises tonight and every night of our lives. Tonight we're going to look at Song of Solomon, the first chapter, verse 7, where it says, Tell me where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. We're using Charles Spurgeon's Evening by Evening to help us take a closer look at the word and to launch us into it. Here's what he writes. These words may be taken as expressions of the believer's desire for Christ's fellowship and his longing for present communion with him. Where do you feed your flock? In your house? I will go if I may find you there. In private prayer, then I will pray without ceasing. In the word, then I will read it diligently. In your ordinances, then I will pursue them with all my heart. Tell me where this happens, for wherever you stand as the shepherd, there will I lie down as a sheep, for no one but yourself can supply my need. I can't be satisfied to be apart from you. My soul hungers and thirsts for the refreshment of your presence, where you make it lie down at noon. Whether at dawn or at noon, my only rest must be where you are and your beloved flock. My soul's rest must be a grace-given rest and can only be found in you. Where is the shadow of that rock? Why should I not rest beneath it? Why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks? <clears throat> Why should I be as one that turns aside by the flocks of your companions? You have companions. Why should I not be one? Satan tells me I'm unworthy, but I was always unworthy. And yet, you have long loved me, and therefore my unworthiness can't be a barrier to having a fellowship with you now. It's true, I am weak in faith and I'm prone to fall, but my very feebleness is the reason why I should always be where you feed your flock, that I may be strengthened and preserved in safety beside the still waters. Why should I turn aside? There is no reason why I should, but there are a thousand reasons why I should not. For Jesus beckons me to come. If he withdrew himself a little, it is but to make me value his presence more. Now that I am grieved and distressed at being away from him, he will lead me again to that sheltered nook where the lambs of his fold are sheltered from the burning sun. Mm. The burning sun. You know, oftentimes we want to play in it. I can remember being a young person who would go out. I lived in Buffalo, New York, so I'll tell you, long, hard winters, and that sun would come out, and we'd all be chomping at the bit to get out there in it, and we would inevitably play so long we would come in sunburned. We would come in, and it wouldn't be till later that night when your skin started to just seem to radiate heat, and slowly the colors would hit, and we would turn redder and redder. And then, of course, over the next few days, there'd be pain as the skin peeled, and this, that, and the other thing, and parts of it would turn to a tan, but other parts would just be sore. Sheep enjoying themselves don't always know where they should be. They need the good shepherd who will guide them to where they should be, where they should lie down, where they will be rested, secured, and cared for. Of course, in later years, a wise parent would guide us back, and indeed, I became a parent and did that with my own children, guiding them to where they would be safe out of the sun. Satan, on the other hand, encourages you, go out, play. Don't worry about that. 
If there's even a consequence, it'll be later on. But the reality is we know today I had many neighbors that would sunbathe all summer. They would wear so many layers of sun tone, I guess it's called and whatnot to cut some of the UV rays and let them get so dark a tan that it would just be almost comical how deep and dark it was. Yet the reality is so many of those individuals that I know now suffer cancers skin cancer predominantly yet there was Satan whispering it's all about you enjoy this have fun oh it doesn't hurt anybody does it there's always a price to be paid except with the Good Shepherd I guess there's a price hey look what I'm doing for you do for others as I watch over you watch over others hey as I welcome you let's welcome others Share the watering hole. Yeah, don't worry. There's plenty for everybody. I'll keep it full. This good shepherd does that. And he expects us to do the same. See, he doesn't come up with some sneaky thing later on like Satan. There is no price to be paid for our foolishness. The faithfulness that we show in coming to him is rewarded with long life, with love, with presence in his company. We need him. We should know his voice and follow him wherever he leads us and trust that it will always be a good pasture for you and for me. That's exactly what the Good Shepherd does is lead his sheep to those good places, the places where he is, the places where we may be in his company, living and loving large all the days of our lives. Brothers and sisters, that's a place I want to be with you. I hope to see you there with our God above, with Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Rest well tonight, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the morning. Good night. <laughs>